like, have you ever seen that? There, there's a TikTok video or video where Billie Eilish is showing how they make her songs. Comping, yeah. And it's, it, yeah. I, it was like this, so, from this one, and they just put, so yep. for the scenes are the same thing. It's like, oh, the way you said the in take 52 <laughs> works really well if I put it into God the damn it. room of take three and they just they, he's basically like a composer on these screens and like pulling all the different scenes and da, 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 okay. to create this perfect moment and then you see these actors are like oh i'm so good i'm like dude i think the editing helped yeah actually because you did that line 65 times yeah yeah and, and they were all terrible <laughs> but there were little moments from each where line. you didn't fuck it up completely yeah. in that one little yeah, delivery yeah, yeah. yeah exactly well show business Listen, I my hand is bleeding. We've we've went through this. I don't know why. So, you know what? It makes me look hard. Makes me look a little street. I like that you're you're bleeding, but you're in that outfit. You know what? Like you're in I that did suit. this for you. I don't I think did, you did. I did this just for you because I wanted to get show up at the sort of like million dollar listing level to oh, this pod and okay. just be like pop. Yeah. Who's selling real estate now? And you're coming in. I think you said hello to me and you're wiping blood off your knuckles. You're like, you ready to pod? You ready? Yeah. Look, I look like McGregor before a fight. It's, it's what you're getting at. There you go. What I do is, what I do is, I, I talk entrepreneurship, but like what you're doing, it's funny because everyone thinks of you as a personality, but you're also a fucking entrepreneur. You're an enormous entrepreneur. Like, so how do you, the, is marketing... Like, are you just made in the shade marketer? Because it seems to come so naturally. But you're also a fucking entrepreneur. You have scale. How many people work at Sirhan? Mm. Hundreds, uh, right? Uh, I guess all encompassing. It's probably just under 450. Yeah. So scale, right? Mm. But people see you as this person. But, well, people online, obviously in the business, that's, that's not the case. How the hell do you pull both of those aspects off? Did you just show up being a great marketer and build the business from there? Like... You're kind of, that's a superpower. And then to build and scale up the business, did you have a, a strategic partner? Like, are you just fucking awesome, dude? Make me feel like shit? My own, my own podcast? No. Tell me about it. Don't hit me. <laughs> I know that's what you do. My hand's guests. already bleeding. Yeah. I know. You're like, you're my last one yeah. of the day, yeah. wiping blood off your hand. Yeah. Um, Wait till you see what happened to the last guy. Yeah. Who acted I, up fresh. Exactly. <laughs> just, the stash says it yes, all. Yes, exactly. Um, I, where do I even start with that question? I don't know, man. I, I, I like, I, I, I want to do as much as I can with the life that I have. I am, I am unfulfilled if I don't try as hard as I possibly can. Mm. Like I, I, I have a hard time sitting still and, and doing no things. Mm -hmm. You know, like it's, it's like I stress out and I shouldn't, and I know this is a problem, but I like, I get stressed about Saturdays, mm -hmm. you know? And I'm like, I, and not that I want to go and like, oh, you know what? No, I'm going to go do this. I'm going to hang with friends. I'm going to go, blah, blah. like, I, I, I want to do productive things. Okay. Like I have like four friends, Yeah, you me know? Too. And then I have a lot of clients and customers yeah. that are all friends, right. right? But they're not like my college buddies. Well, they're not in the, the, the center of the, you know. Right, right. You have like, there's a bullseye. Circles. Yeah. Um, uh, but I always want to do as much as I can with the life that I have. And I, and I know too, that the busier that I, I am, the more of a tornado that I create, uh, the more busy I will be to the point where like, you'll be too busy to fail. Mm. Right. It's because you're moving, you're moving. You're yeah. Trying like you're, you're in constant motion. Like, like a river is going to make its way to the ocean. Right. Unless something stops it. Right. So if I'm moving as fast as I can, eventually I'll make my way to the ocean. And right. the ocean is, you know, amazing success, whatever that might be for you. Right. And so I just keep things in motion and you, you figure it out. It's like what you learn in improv classes. You say, yes, and, mm. yes, and. Okay, we wanna start our own company in the middle of COVID? Yep, and go. <laughs> and yeah. Now we're gonna open up this and we're gonna do this and we wanna expand, but no one's expanding. The market's contracting right now. The world is falling apart. Jimmy Diamond just said a storm is coming. We're right. all gonna die. Right, exactly. Right? Uh, right. So, Oh, so we should still go forward, right? We should still do this. Mm. Was, was there like an inner, were, were you just like, hey, I'm going to do this no matter what? Or was there some inner guidance that's like, well, we're going to build this model differently than the other guys when they least expect it, which is probably now. I mean, I went to, so I'm a real estate broker. 
right? Based I in know. New York. I've been waiting for you to show me this apartment. It's fucked up. You showed yeah. me. <laughs> so I, I, I spent like a couple years while I was at another firm taking meetings and interviewing at other places, mm-hmm. um, uh, hoping that another firm would have the answer for me mm-hmm. of how is real estate going to be bought and sold in the future? Like, what can you do for me? What's my personal brand look like right. at your company? And, and I want to grow, right? I want to grow. I don't want to sit stagnant. I don't want to do the same thing this year that I did last year. I want right. to grow. I want to do more. Uh, and no one had a good answer for me. And, um, uh, and it really pissed me off. Mm-hmm. And so I blame every other real estate company in the United States for forcing me to start my own company. For sure. Yeah. I, I honestly, like if I, you know how hard it is to start a company, you know how expensive it is, you know how much of a pain in the ass it is. <laughs> like being a CEO, right. all you do is deal with problems all day long. Right. I, 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 it would have been way easier if another firm had come to me and said, no, actually, this is how the future looks. Right. Here you go. have your business here for the future. Right. I probably would have just done that. Right. But no one had a good answer. Everyone sucked. And so we started Sirhands, which is a triumvirate of companies, which is content to training to commerce. So we have an in-house production company that creates content for lead generation for salespeople yeah. and people who need salespeople. Salespeople go into the funnel, they come into training that we have. Yeah. We have a large ed tech platform for sales training, or they come into our brokerage and they sell with us wherever we are. And then we have the content creation um, uh, that then goes into people that 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 need salespeople. So people who need salespeople get connected to people who are salespeople. We put them together. They do deals all over the world, and then round and round and round we go. Mm. Um, and no one else took me seriously when I talked about that elsewhere. Well, it's an incredible challenge to pull off because it's three enormously unique businesses put together, creating this flywheel effect. Yeah, where everybody can win. Mm-hmm. Fuck. It's a lot at the same time. I don't know if I could go back in time. I don't know if I would have started three companies at the same time in the middle of COVID 2020 (laughs) when the world was shut down. Yeah. It's a lot. But like ignorance is bliss that way. If I knew then what I know now, thank thank God I didn't know it. Right, (laughs) right, right. You're just like, oh, we're going to figure this out no matter what. It's like moving to New York. Like if I knew when I was graduating college in 2006, like really how hard it was to survive in Mm. New York City and not just like, oh, it'll be hard. You know, (laughs) if I knew how hard it was gonna be, how expensive the city is, how tough it is, like Mm. how dangerous it can be sometimes, how lonely the city can, like, would I have really moved here by myself? Right. In like the summer, I don't know, like, I don't know. Right. Yeah, we would have like, seen you in Tampa or something like that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> seen you at a beach. Rocking out. No, I would have yeah. stayed home. My parents are in Colorado. Oh, you're was, like, it's great here. I would have stayed in Colorado. Life was fine. Oh, man. So look, there. I look at these little granular elements of people's companies and and uh, I'm, I'm looking at your website for to build out something for one of my businesses, completely different different universe, but you have this like way of showcasing a property on your website that's very techy and very uh, deliberate. Yeah. So you have these modulars, these modular icons that say- Lifestyle index. Lifestyle yeah. index. There's, yeah. a, there's a great school here. There's art. There's a walk. You, you, going for out into what people really care about when they think about real estate, not yep. just the square footage, not just the price, blah, blah, blah. It's like, okay, what does it feel like to live here? Mm-hmm. And so- when I saw that for the first time, that's when I started to really think differently. I, I, that's where I really saw what you were doing differently in that little tendril of, of um, and I, I'm sure that that was very intentional on your part to create that. Yeah, we, we changed up a lot of, listen, the best part about starting your own company is you can do whatever the fuck you want. Right. Like that, that's what was so liberating for me. It's, it's equally terrifying. Right. Because what if it doesn't work? Oh my God, what am I going to do? What if no one cares? Bah, 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 bah. But like, uh, uh, you know, like you have to try. Like, you know, like what would you do if you knew you couldn't fail type mm-hmm. of thing, right? And I'd rather regret the things I did than the things I never tried. Right. And so a big reason why I ended up starting my own company um, was also because like, I knew if I don't do it now, I'll never do it. Mm. What do we do? Wait till I have older kid and like right. be, you know, much older. Now, obviously, I'm sure I could totally do that. And to anyone listening, age shouldn't stop you from doing anything. Right. But for me, I wanted to start as soon as I possibly could. Um, and little things like that on the website, you know, the real estate brokerage site, 
that everyone knows is there's photos of the listing, there's floor plans, maybe some video if you're lucky, description and some like taxes and monthly information, maybe like some stuff about the location, that's it. Right. But that's it. If you don't know the address and you don't know where this is on a map, if you're from out of town, if you're a foreigner, or if you just moved here and you don't really know yet, right. you're clicking away. And so mm. I wanna keep people on the page for an extra 1.2 seconds. That if I keep huge. them on the page for an extra 1.2 seconds, I can increase my ROI on actual outbound, like, you know, right. on actual inbound, uh, 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 you know, lead gen from yeah. there. And then I can increase the ROI on actual showings, which increases my ability to actually close and sell something. Right. And it works by showing people, hey, you're not just buying this living room, you're buying the location, mm -hmm. right? You live in the location. You don't live in that living room alone. Right. Right, um, uh, it goes a long, long way to show people like, oh, I was gonna click away, but you have six gyms here, two dog mm. parks and an alfresco market, uh, Pretty click cool. again. Yeah, yeah. It's funny because now we're, we're, we're basically in growth hacking, we're in like digital growth hacking. I mean, the other thing that you guys are doing, so I'm gonna just nerd out on your website because it's just usually where I, where I start is like, you have a GIF headshot. Mm -hmm. Whose fucking idea was that, dude? Uh, Whoever did that. Mine, Plug I think, them. yeah. Plug yeah. Them. No, it's my idea. Um, it is brutally annoying to execute at scale. <laughs> I can't so even, that I is a wish, pain in the ass. I was like, this dude. Yeah, she's, Natalie's laughing because she's like, we got to deal with it all the time. You're like, dude, why did, when we were, when we were four people, it was fun. You're like, we have to great. spend $30,000 a month to take GIFs? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so everything is, dude, life is in motion. Real estate's in motion. That's like why in 2015, when I first started, because Million Dollar Listing, was global. Yeah. And so people would watch that show and then they would email me about things I sold a year ago. And so hopefully I could get them as clients. Was this the beginning else. of your career, million dollar? Where are you in your real estate career when you're on million, million dollar listing? Million dollar listing uh, was on the air for 10 years. And I- When did you join that? So I got into the business the day Lehman filed for bankruptcy in 2008. Right, uh -huh. Million dollar listing started casting in March of 2010. Okay. So I've been in the business for like a year and a half and change. Okay. Um, and so I went to that open call in the, in Times Square with 3000 real estate Holy agents shit. and then totally forgot about it. And then like four <laughs> months later, they were like, Hey, you've made it to the top 600. And then like I did a Skype and then three months later, they were like, Hey, you've made it to the final 16 and we're going to follow you for half a day. It's like, um, shit. Um, and then long story short, and then we started filming at the end of 2010. It came out season one in March of 2012. Right. Um, and then. We ended, up, we ended up doing a lot of spinoffs and different things and the books and the podcasts and yeah. all this stuff. But, you know, people would reach out. It's like, oh, I wish I could do this a lot faster. Mm. Like imagine if I could like film an apartment and put it out to the world like at 6 p.m. today. Yeah. And so we started doing that on YouTube like early, like 2015, 2016. Content is in your DNA. Yeah, we started selling that way. And that's when I started saying, okay, I need a media business uh, next to my real estate brokerage business. <laughs> right. um, and it, it's gonna be a differentiator for us. And it became a big, big part of our brand recognition and identity. So when it came time to doing our own company, you know, five years later in 2020 and building out the website, it was like, I'm just sick and tired of seeing standard headshots of people. Right. Um, uh, the tech is there and people's phones are fast enough and computers are fast enough now. Like let's, let's we make them GIFs. Yeah, let's make them GIFs. Let's make them funny. Let's make them bounce around. There are static photos, at, you know, that then set all in. Back. Yeah. Yeah, but um, uh, I think the GIFs are fun and the motion is all there. The photos are out. We take everything vertically. Yeah. Nothing's horizontal anymore. Everything is vertical. The properties are all in motion and it's a much better experience experience, I think, for the customer. Yeah. Well, I loved it enough to st start to benchmark it for the way that I look at, I'm building out a different ecosystem that has nothing to do with real estate, but um, I, I just looked at that and I said, that, that modular nature of just, hey, let me display some other features of this business. I thought that that was, that was really interesting. So a lot of people copy the website, like blatantly. Well, like full on copy it. It sounds well, like you're about to full on copy it too. Uh, Great. Uh, the editors will cut this part out. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to completely copy it. No, it's inspiration. That's what Picasso said. Yeah, it is. <laughs> Fucking. That's what Steve Jobs said. He walked so through Steve IBM Jobs and he's like, I'm going to also do this. <laughs> <laughs> well, you are you know where I live. It's okay. Ryan, it's too late. You know where I live. Miami Beach. Miami I'll Beach. I'll look for the, the beard stash guy. You should be able suit. to find me. Yes. <laughs> this is, look, I'm just trying to, I'm showing up to this podcast. Like I'm ready to, to, to move some real estate. You know I love I mean? it. 
Yeah. I love it. You'd be like New York style. You wouldn't last a day, motherfucker. You would last. <laughs> You'd be good. I feel like I would be good. You would be good. You just gotta have a personality. You gotta uh, talk. You gotta be willing to talk stories and empathize with people. It's perspective and empathy. Mm. It's the two things you need. You gotta have great perspective for the person that's in front of you. And you have to be able to empathize with whatever they're going through, whether it's the highs or the lows. Mm. And then there's things you can work on, like the skill, once you understand that sales is all perspective all empathy, um, uh, then comes into like vocal inflection. You know how many mm. people I meet who can't go into like their upper register to be excited and then can't talk slowly to calm when down. people are upset. Yeah. They have like their one note all the time and they understand, they're, and they're so confused why they don't do business, uh. right? They, they don't understand how to make eye contact. They don't understand body language. They don't right. understand what their core identity is. Like I, 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 I dare everyone to go find someone who's honest with you and ask them, please define me without using my first and last name. Huh. How would you describe me? Right. Right? Like what would people say about you? Me? Without your first and last name. Oh my God. You are I what? can't even imagine the amazing adjectives that would roll off their tongue. Yeah. <laughs> like what? It, it, uh, a it lot of just, it, a lot I would of it be puffing myself up here, right? Unfortunately, I... a lot of it starts superficially, right? Mm. They always start with, with like who you are. Like I, like I did this, um, Oh, you know, a long time ago when I first got in the business and you're like, you're this super tall, really, really white, uh, uh, awkwardly gray haired guy who tried to be an actor, it didn't work out. He got into real estate. Uh, he thinks he's funny, but most of the time he's not. I was like, oh, is that, is that like, real? What the fuck is, is that? Is that my personal brand? Yeah. Is that what it is? Oh, he's like, oh yeah, yeah. Oh, so one more thing. Um, you don't look people in the eye. You, you look at the ground while you walk. It's like, no, what? I don't. And then I walked away and I was like, wait, wait, I'm I, doing uh, it. Damn it, I'm doing it right now. God damn it. There's so many things you don't realize you do that like you are that person and we uh. never pay attention. We're so ignorant to how we appear to the world. And that's what brand is. Brand is, brand is core identity meets perception that the uh -huh. world has of you, meets reputation that's people talking about you behind your back when right. you leave the room or you know, when they swipe away from you, right. uh, meets brand recognition over time, yeah. right? And so that's something we work on with all salespeople, even properties, like everything has a brand and people buy brands, they don't buy products. Know thyself. Mm -hmm. Do you take salespeople through like a process where you're like, this is your style, this is what you have. Yeah, I mean, when a, you a big, onboard, a big part of our, pro I mean, a big part of our process is, is sales training. Uh -huh. I, it never made sense to me how like LeBron James practices 90% of the year <laughs> and then is in games 10% of the year. Right. But salespeople and most people, honestly, um, are in games 98% of the year. Yeah. And then they practice 2% of the year, but only when they have to, only for licensure, only for code. Yeah. Only if their boss is telling them to. And it's an offsite and they get wasted and they don't remember anything anyway. Exactly. At least that's the Wall Street. Model. Don't you think there are things that you can learn to improve your life? Mm -hmm. Like I think investing into yourself is it, it, like, is makes so much common sense and no one does it. Mm -hmm. No one does it. No one does it. So sales training is a big, big thing for us. Improv is a big thing for us. Really? Always. Just like, let's think on, think on our feet here when you walk into this room. Yeah, we were actually, Natalie and I were just, we're just talking about it. Like um, 18 of the top 20 CEOs, uh -huh. like Jeff Bezos, Elon Musk, Oprah Winfrey, Eric Schmidt from Google, like you name it they all sincerely credit improv really? as something that is tantamount to their success as a CEO. For one, um, uh, it teaches you to be comfortable with the uncomfortable. And because, the unknown, yeah. Because, yeah, because as a CEO, right? Like every day is different. Right. And most of your day is pretty shitty because all you deal with is problems that other people can't solve. Right. That's your day. And they're turning up on your desk. Exactly, yeah. right? Two, it teaches you to think outside the box, which you have to do if you want to grow and if you want to survive, mm -hmm. right? And it teaches you to pivot, okay? Like, because you're going to be on stage with a bunch of random people in an improv class. You don't know, you're insecure, you're weird. And they're like, okay, Ryan, you are uh, in a Speedo on top of Mount Everest, <laughs> on fire, looking for peanut butter. Now go. Right. And you're like, <sighs> yes, and. That's the rule, yeah. yes, and. And it also teaches you to be authentically you. Like a lot of people, like you look pretty, like you've owned whatever is hey, happening listen, here. listen, thank you. Coming from you, yeah, Mr. Blue. I Most people have a really hard time being authentic. Mm -hmm. they, they don't know who they are. They've never actually asked themselves or anybody. And they 
live this massive imitation of who they think they're supposed mm. to be based on watching other people or what they see on social or what they saw in a couple movies they really, really liked. Right. You know, most people don't actually know if things are funny. It's like why you watch something and if you watch it with other people, like, they're ah. laughing. And so you start laughing too. You're like, right. that, I, I believe that that, well, that was funny. That right. was funny. Right. Right. Like most people don't actually know when they're hungry. Yeah. They're just bored. Most people don't actually know when they're truly sad. Right. right? Maybe they're just lonely in that moment. Yeah. Um, uh, not all the time, but I think like having a true sense of self to understand what your emotional range is, uh, is really, really, really key. It, but through the process of being on camera and through the process of being on, you know, million dollar listing. Yep. Have you become more you over time? Because in my 20s, I don't know what the hell I was. I didn't know who was I was who, who I was supposed to be. I was triangulating and pantomiming and uh, I went to you know to Wall Street to go earn money the same way everyone else you know thought that 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 was the that was just what you did. Yeah. Even though I was an artist, I was a musician. I was all these other things. I was like, "Ah, yeah. That's worry about that later." Yeah, yeah. Worry about that when you're dead. You know, go make some money, asshole. Yeah. And that's what I did. And of course, you know, I had to eventually steer closer to where I wanted to be or I was going to go fucking insane. Yeah. And I'm more me now and I don't think I'm there yet as much as you love my suit, Ryan. Thank you for complimenting me multiple times. I'm getting there, dude. And this is my welcome to my process. I mean, doing this show, um, you know, entering the content realm is helping me become more me. Yeah. Publicly. It was great. Welcome to the world. Thank you. I feel like you're being reborn right in front of me. I right am. Now. It's great. It's wow. beautiful. And it's beautiful. There you go. But it, but it's true because when you're doing this thing, I know you've been in the content game for a long time. I haven't. Yeah. You know, um, you can't fucking lie. You just have to like be your, you can't be version one, version two. So like you just have to be the version because people are listening to you for two hours. Yeah. And you know what else I realized that I think was was really, really key for me? It's uh, the truth is just more fun. Mm. The truth is more fun. <laughs> like honesty I is love that. just more fun. Like, you know, you know how much more work it is to lie? Mm -hmm. How much more work it is to like keep a story going, to keep an imitation going, to lie to yourself? Like, dude, you're the only self you're ever gonna know. Right. Like, so like the truth is so much cleaner. It's, it gets you so much further. Yeah. And for people that try to be everything to everyone, yeah. they end up being nothing to no one. Yeah. And so I think a, a key for me with, you know, Million Dollar Listing and seeing myself on TV and seeing how I acted and seeing that some people loved me. And then there were other people who were like, I hate that guy. Right. At first it was like, oh no, I want everyone to love me. Yeah. And that's what your gut instinct is. Everyone just wants to be liked. Yeah. Everyone wants everyone to like them. Yep. And so, uh, uh, but I had to fight against that because then it was like, if I just try to be someone that everyone likes, I'm gonna be someone that no one gives a shit about. Right. So I have my niche, I carve my niche, and I wanna be everything to some people. Yeah. And that's good enough. Yeah. But you had to go through the, pro like, because I went through the same, I'm going through the same thing where I'm like, you know, I created this viral series that quote unquote, everyone liked. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, okay. And then there would be the dissident voices and it would keep me up at night, the, the, the toxic comment section, you know, like, huh, you know. Uh, and now I'm like, well, if I'm going to stay in this ecosystem, in this world, yep. I have to be me. Yep. It's impossible to be a character for the long term. It would kill, it would kill me. It was too heavy. Yeah, it's crazy. It's too heavy. Yep. And well, you've, you've taken that and you've moved it into obviously a, a beautiful business. And I don't know, guys, finding yourself, it seems to me to be something that you would have to do to be not only happy and energetic, but also to, to find success. Yeah, I think, I don't know. I, I, don't, I don't really prescribe to people saying you should do what you love. Like, I, I think you should do what you can sell, right? And if that's what you love, great. Uh, if it's not, if you're good at selling it, then, then you'll find things mm. that you love. Mm -hmm. Like I don't, I, I love the game of sales. 
I don't necessarily like love real estate. I meet a lot of people who are in the real estate business who like geek out about crown moldings right. and like the La Cornu stove and the waterfall backsplash and the <laughs> island and like these things. And I'm like, okay. It, 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 yeah, that's all beautiful and it'll help me sell it. But I'm not like- Emotionally driven. I'm not emotionally this. attached to the real estate. I'm emotionally attached to the deals. And I will mm. say to every client I ever work with, like, listen, if you want a broker who's going to say yes to you mm -hmm. all day, every day, right. and tell you how beautiful your house is, there's 80,000 agents in New York City. There's there's a lot of them who will yes you to do. <laughs> and when the sale doesn't go through, I'll mm -hmm. be here for you. Right. I don't work for you. I don't work for the buyer. I work for the deal. Mm. That's how this works. If, if you just want to hire a tour guide, by all means, work with somebody else. And I, and I think like when I started talking like that and being super authentic mm -hmm. and super honest with clients, like, yes, my fiduciary is to you and I'll protect you at all costs. I'm in your corner. Mm -hmm. We're going we're gonna to fight to the death to get this deal done. Mm -hmm. But you're also hiring me to do a deal. Right. You're not hiring me to like show the windows. Right. You know? Right. And so you work for the deal and the job is to get a deal done. And then that's how you're that's how you're that's how you're judged in this business. Yeah. How much do you sell? That is it. I'm gonna flip that. I'm gonna flip that on its head because I see it what you're describing. Yeah. What, the way that I think about it is I say iterate until people start clapping. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I say try this, try that, try that. And all of a sudden you're gonna get a fucking round of applause, whatever it is. Sports, music business, whatever the fuck, Acada academia, whatever it is that you do. And what I think is you're not choosing the markets, choosing you. Like for, for me, it, and then if you are lucky enough to also like that thing, put the gas down and fucking off to the races. Yeah. What, so you're seeing it from the, the side of the, the individual, the salesperson, whatever, you're just sell, meaning transact with your skill. And I think the market like, I think the market comes in and tells you what you're going to, you're going to do when you try enough things. That's, that's how it's been with, that's certainly how it's been with me because it's product market fit. Yeah. Right? When I, you said like, Hey man, when, when'd you get into TikToks or whatever? And I'm just like, how, you said, why? I'm like, I don't know. I just tried a bunch of things and that one worked. And then I said, well, I don't mind doing this. This is pretty fun. I think I could do this a little bit longer. Mm -hmm. And I did a little bit longer and I did a little bit longer. And, you know, it's, it's grown into a whole fucking thing that I have no idea what, what, where this goes next. Um, but to me, that was a result of iteration and it wasn't my intention. I was like, I'm just going to try a lot of different things. And this one just happened to work out and I happened to not mind it. I happened to enjoy it. Sure. And that's kind of the way I bumble through the universe. <laughs> like a little Roomba searching around corners and hitting the family dog. That's me. That's my strategy. They've now, they've now created those as drones. Perfect. Not, not for cleaning the floor, but as... Cleaning um, up the city. No, for, for map. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Shooting everyone's head. <laughs> so just like mapping floor plans and mapping rooms. Like you can now, instead of having to like move cameras around or pick up that little thing, you know, just get in, hit a little button, drone goes up. Same thing with like, you know, Tesla, it knows when you're close to something. Yeah. And so now the drone just gets to boop, 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 goes around and it maps the whole apartment, comes back, lands in your fucking Oh my hand. God. Like Harry Potter fucking crazy? shit. Dude, that's fantastic. Yeah. You're like, and that saved me five hours. Uh, yeah, listen, I mean, technology is amazing until that drone one day is like above your head when you wake up and you're like, <laughs> what, 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 you're like what's up drone? I didn't mean it. Yeah. And what I said like, about you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I didn't mean it. Yeah. Yeah, when they become sentient. I don't, I don't know why what you just said made me think of something else. I, you know, I, I, I think there's like a misconception that, that, you know, I and, and other people, uh, I've only just wanted to be successful. Like in, in monetary terms or? Yeah, monetary, like life, uh -huh. right? Oh, you're working so hard to be successful. Uh -huh. um, and I'm, and I'm not, like, I'm working incredibly hard to be great. Mm. And I think people who set out with a plan just to be a success, I wanna be a success, miss the point. Because you're trying to go from like step one to step 10. Mm -hmm. When if you focus on just being great at what you do, you're gonna be so great that everyone else has to notice. Right. Right? The success is gonna become, is gonna come by default. Right. Right? It's like if you take care of the work, the, 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 you know, the work is gonna take care of you. Yeah. Um, and I think like that's, 
there's, I don't know if maybe it's just like this generation because all we see is success now. It's, it's, it's all plastered, we see. plastered all over social media. Everywhere. And you can't tell the difference between real success and fake success. What this, is that bull? Oh, oh, they didn't actually pay for that. Oh my God. And it, right. it, I think it's, 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 it's really, really scary, you know, whether it's, personal appearance or uh, for financial gain, you know, like we, we don't know anymore. It used to be like, you knew who the celebrities were, you knew who the rich people were, you knew who, you knew who was really, really successful, right. who was really, really smart. And like, it was really clear as to what the steps were right. to get up the ladder. And, and the ladder was blown, it caught fire. Right. It's, it has been totally blown up, right? right? There's, there's so many paths now for the better actually. Yeah right? To get to where you want to go, but you have to focus on being great. Don't focus on just being a success. Right. Well, that's a, that's a great, what, what's, there's like a sports, there's like an old school sports quote. It's like, focus on the play and the scoreboard will take care of itself kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's great because when I'm, you know, when I'm coming into the room to do this or whatever, to, to say hi and bullshit in the hallway, right? When you get here, it's like, I can either think I want this to do a lot of views. I want basically something completely outside of my control. Sure. Or I could say like, I'm just gonna have a lot of fun yeah. and, and just gonna dig into the conversation. Now that I can control. Sure. And if I can dig into the conversation and I enjoy it, there's a good chance that someone else might enjoy it. Yep. And, uh, and if you don't enjoy it, the algorithm's going to show it to you anyway. Exactly. You can't, you can't stop us. You're going to archive this interview so fast. Har fully archived. Archived. <laughs> In a month, they'll be like, dude, what happened to our, our... You're like, oh, no, it's not up there. It's so weird. I'm like, huh. Oh, bro, it's text. asking, delete his number. <laughs> he's, he's gone. He's dead to me now. Exactly. Bye-bye. <laughs> no, that's... Look, each... Every time I... I get the room. It's like, I'm looking for a couple of things. It's like, I, I want to see iteration, but I also love to see the sort of mantra and the vision. And, uh, it's, uh, especially in your space, focusing on your craft is, is just a, a really interesting way to think about it. Because when you think about real estate from a distance, I mean, you're just like, sell the thing, sell the thing, get yeah. the money. Boom, 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 boom. Yep. Well, it's clear that when you distill it down to first principles, it fucking works because you've built a, a team of people that are pulling this off yep. and you're going against monolithic businesses. Mm -hmm. So I yep. commend you, my man. Thanks. We'll see if I survive. I don't think we've talked about real estate at all. Yeah, we did. I don't even this know what we talked about this whole this time. This whole thing is about real estate. Are you sure? We are like very <laughs> off topic in this conversation. <laughs> Like no, no idea one, what's going on. This is about, this is about the spirit is of real, real estate. Okay. This is the underlying... Yeah. This yeah. is like the Notre Dame football pump up conversation that goes before you step out to sell the home. Yeah. You're like, good. That had nothing to do with football. Fuck it. We're going to win the game. Exactly. That's what this is. Yeah. Okay. As far as I'm concerned. Got it. It's Got too it. late. You're already here. Try all things. That's what it is. Try all things. Away. And you're already here. So try everything. It's too late. Yeah. You gotta try Who else? I mean, no, my thing is like, I don't even, my content, like I'm, I don't ever actually talk about real estate, but everyone DMs me and is like, Nick, I'm looking at this multifamily and I, I think I might be able to rent 35% of it to my uncle and turn this into millions of dollars. I'm like, what the, f why is real estate the hottest thing on social media when it comes to investing? Tell me. I mean, it's good for you. Cause it's, it's neutral easy. for me. <laughs> because you can see it. Mm. You can see it. And everyone lives in a home who has a phone anyway, <laughs> for the most part, <laughs> right? Obviously not everyone has a home. This is rhyming. Everybody lives in a home and has a phone. <laughs> it's, uh, uh, listen, real estate is the, I, I mean, it's, this is, this is incorrect, but real estate has been sold to us as the dream, mm -hmm. right? American dream of home ownership. Mm -hmm. um, real estate is definitely a product though, right? It's right. a banking product. Mm -hmm. So let's be super clear about that. Like yep. you, you are not supposed to be buying things in cash, right? Government hates it when you do mm -hmm. that. They, they, you get more tax dollars when you get things mortgaged, right? The banks make more money. That's how they make money off right. of you. Like the FHA yesterday or two days ago, um, just approved the 40 year mortgage, right? So for people like mm -hmm. the fixed rate loan, most people, unsophisticated purchasers, they're like, oh my God, I can afford my home now. I can afford more home. My monthly payments can be lower and I have 40 years to pay it off. Right. I'll be dead before I pay it off. But then <laughs> they don't actually multiply the payments. Yeah, it's double. Yeah, banks Banks are like, uh, yeah, I'll do a 40 year loan. They're like, right? oh yeah, Let's, we just got another one on these. Exactly, yeah. exactly. I'll totally do a 40 year loan, right? I'm gonna lower his payment by $60 a month, but he's gonna pay me- $400,000 more in additional interest. interest, correct. 
right? And no one thinks about that way because no one thinks about the long term. They just say like, oh, I'm good, dude. Now, listen, there is something to be said about fixed rate loans. Like if you, you know, if you have a fixed rate, two and a half percent loan, you're, you're sitting pretty sweet right now. Yeah. It's free money. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's relatively pretty expensive, but today, um, uh, you know, people just have to think about the long term. Even when people talk about IO product, they're like, oh my God, I don't know, 2008, the financial crisis. I'm like, where were you seven years ago? Mm -hmm. Okay. Where do, where do you want to be in seven years from now? Mm -hmm. You, you, like seven years ago, you were in school. Like seven years ago, you were at that job you hated. Look at your life now. Seven years ago, you didn't have a family. Right. You know, where could you be in seven years from now? And who knows where rates will be? Who knows? No yeah, one knows. It'll be 25%. If they're 25%, we have much bigger problems <laughs> than mortgage interest. Than your studio apartment in uh, Hell's Kitchen. Yeah, we, we will. <laughs> By that point, there will be martial law. Uh, inflation will be to a point where the United States becomes Venezuela. Um, and we will all be running around with body armor. Right. Right. It'll be a whole thing. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There, I saw a meme the other day. They said like, <laughs> they said like, by the dip, if there's nuclear war, <laughs> nuclear war, so either you won't need to worry about losing any money. It's, it's like, true. Yeah, you won't. Dude, it's something I say to, you know, I deal with a lot of billionaires, right? Baller. And something- Power move. <laughs> <laughs> I deal with a lot of billionaires um, and they're real estate, obviously. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, the same way someone buying a million dollar home is like, no, I'm not going over a million dollars. He wants his 1.1, 1 .1, yeah, tell him to fuck himself. Right. Right. People are like, they'll cut it hard. I'm not yeah. going up for a hundred grand. Uh -huh. Okay. Um, which I can understand, right? It's it's 10%, right? I understand that. It's also psychological. Yeah, of so. course. Psychological, I don't want to go over a million bucks, but I'll deal with billionaires who are negotiating, you know, a $60 million transaction mm -hmm. for an apartment they may never use. Right. Okay. And they'll sit there and they'll argue about, you know, 5 million bucks. Right. Like, well, I'm not going to do it. Mm -hmm. like, well, you're already at 60 and you really, really like it, right? you know? And one of the things that I'll say to billionaires too is like, what, what do you, you, you won the lottery right. already. You're you know? good. In whatever industry you're in, like <laughs> if you lost $5 million today, right. would it change your life at all? Mm -hmm. And the answer is always no, but then it's principle. Mm -hmm. And I, I only have the money I have because I've worked so hard for it, which in some cases is true. Some right. cases not true. Right. Like. Yeah, but life is short. Right. Think about what you could be doing with this space right now. Think about the poor dinosaurs. The bronchiosaurus was like chewing a leaf. Next thing you know, she's like, what's that in the sky? Oh. Dead forever. And the whole species is gone for all Done. time. Living as a mold in a museum for little kids to point at. I, so terrible. So what are we doing arguing over money right now? Just <laughs> buy the penthouse. <laughs> Just Let's get go. it. Life is awesome. It's going to be okay. And at that price point, whether it's 1 million to 1.1 1 .1 or 60 to 65, at the end of the day, when you call me up in five years or six years or two years, you're not going to remember what you paid. <laughs> Nine times out of 10, no one remembers. And I always do this with clients when they call me back, right? They're like, hey, I'm thinking about selling. And I'm like, hey, just, just real just quick. Curious. Just curious. Um, do you remember what you paid? And like, I think we paid, I don't know, like like, uh, like one was, was it like a million, like a million two. Like, no, motherfucker. I remember distinctly. I have the scars. <laughs> you paid nine hundred and eighty-seven thousand dollars, forty-three cents. Exactly. Mm -hmm. um, and remember when you ruined my life about it? And they're like, "Well, good thing we got a good deal." I'm like, but you don't remember, right. do you? Right. It doesn't make a difference <laughs> to your life. You know. I love it. Yeah. Now listen, money's important. You should save it. Don't spend it erroneously. <laughs> you got to have the disclaimers in this podcast. Of Otherwise, course. people would think that this is just something they should go out and just spend willy-nilly. This is yeah, a really rich but podcast. like, dude, like you can always make more money. And in the grand scheme of things, like things are speed bumps, mm -hmm. you know, they're not brick walls. Mm -hmm. And so knowing that like, you, you should never sit there and stare at a menu at a restaurant and be like, oh my God, I don't know what to order. <laughs> like there's page after page after page. And I just like, I'm like, how do you get me out of here? Live? Get me out of here. You get a move. Right. Life is short. Right. Like get I, the burger, get the fries when in doubt. Okay. Yeah. Let's keep this Just party fucking going. Dude, steak and potatoes all day long. <laughs> well, 
I don't know. Like, I don't know where this fish came from. Right. Trying to serve me halibut from the East River. I don't Fuck. need a Bronzino. It's yeah. noon. Exactly. What am I, uh, in the mafia? Yeah. This is sick. Yeah. You, are you this. in the mafia? No. Look, look at you. Listen. No, are you a little down. bit? Calm down. <laughs> yeah, I walked in here and your hands were bloody. Okay. So okay. I don't even know. Listen. You, you got me on Canal Street. There's like a lot of shit happening outside. Listen. I walk in, you're wiping blood off your knuckles. You got this suit on. You're like, welcome to my space. You said you wanted to be on the podcast. I run things a little differently around here. Yeah. Okay. Just, you know. Okay. Be happy. You didn't end up like the last guy. I'm fearful for my life. Okay. Dude, um, I wish we could keep talking. Yeah. You're fucking awesome. Um, this is some a vision that people like would love to hear and take a window outside of like the social media landscape and hear about how this stuff, you know, the sausage gets made, man. So well, I'm, good, I'm luck, a, good I'm, luck with your um your website that you're copying based on mine. You're welcome. I mean, I wish thank you. The you. Best of luck. Um, Ryan, great pod. I'll see you soon, man. Okay, see ya. Bye.